Hey guys, it's Adam from Middle Age Gaming, and I did the reaction video for the trailer for Armor Core 6 Spires of Rubicon just the other day, but there were some things that I got right, but there were also quite a few things that I got wrong. I was just so caught up in the moment, I must have missed them, but also there are a lot of things that are really, really fast. So I've gone through this with a fine tooth comb and found some really interesting things here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do kind of a, a deep dive analysis of the trailer and what we can find out. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So starting off, we can see that we are in space. Uh, they are telling us that you know we are arriving here. So clearly we are not from Rubicon. We are from somewhere else and we're arriving there, possibly Earth, who knows. Uh, they're also telling us to wake us up, which means that we have been in deep sleep for some time. And the other thing that's really interesting is they actually say that we are, they say, Handler Walter Verified. So basically, Walter is going to be our handler throughout this game. He's also referenced later on, but then right after they mention that he's been verified, it does kind of have a robotic voice. So I'm thinking that Walter is probably going to be some kind of AI, but basically that's our handler. That's where we're going to be getting all of our missions from. Okay, and so that's basically this part here. And then moving on shortly, we are going to get a view of some of the set pieces that we're going to have in the game. All right, so they're falling down to earth, feed the fire, all right. And then we get here, see here we get a factory. Okay, so this is gonna be one of the set pieces. This is really excites me because in the original games, they did have a lot of different kind of environments. And it looks like we do have quite a few here. So this is a factory, semi-indoor, all right? And we can also see that we have here kind of a snowy field with the windmills. And we also have what looks like a mine. And this, I'm not quite sure what that is. I'm not quite sure what we're looking at here. But if I had to guess, I would say this is either some kind of uh, city or refinery. All right, so, and then obviously some of the other uh, clips we're gonna see later are gonna be showing that we will be on the surface. This looks like some kind of reactor. All right, and this one I also thought was interesting because that right there looks to me like some kind of ship. And probably not that relevant to the story, but we do know that there was some sort of disaster on Rubicon. So there could have been, you know, people trying to escape and for whatever reason, they were unable to. So maybe this is an escape ship. But, you know, it could just actually be a really interesting looking structure as well. It's not quite clear, but my assumption is this is some kind of uh, launch pad and some kind of ship here. All right, so we're going to say let the fires burn and all that. All right, we're dropping in. Okay. And then right here they say augmented human C461, sorry, C4621 has awakened. So that's where I got really excited in the original because that augmented human to me says human plus. And if you are a fan of the more recent Armored Core games, not the older ones, you might not know what human plus is. In the original Armored Core games, when you go on a mission, basically, you know, you accept your contract. They'll say, this is how much money you're gonna be paid. And then you can do some, you know, you go into your mission, your ammunition that you use is gonna have a cost. The damage, you know, the, to repair your damage is gonna have a cost. So basically, however much money you make from the mission, and then they'll deduce how much, you know, you spent based on ammunition and all that. Well, if you fail the mission, obviously you get no money, but you still need to pay the cost. So what you can do is you can actually go into debt. And if you go to negative, if I remember correctly, 50,000 credits, then basically what would happen is you would get a game over, but you would get a short cutscene. And what would happen is the game would start over, but you would unlock some new abilities that you didn't have previously. So that was kind of a way to balance out. If the game's getting too hard and you can't handle it, you become more powerful and then you start over in this more powerful state. And some of these things were things like uh, you could throw your sword. So if you swung the sword and hit dash, you know, shortly thereafter, you could actually throw the sword as a beam weapon. Another one was you had certain things like grenade launchers where you had to take a knee and to stabilize yourself, those you could fire while being upright. Uh, so you basically became, you know, you, you unlock these new abilities. So that's what Human Plus was. Now here, they say augmented human. Is that going to be human plus, which means that, is it a core part of the story, meaning that 
we're not going to be, you know, having this secret way to unlock abilities, which would be disappointing because that was always kind of a fun thing. But uh, it seems like it might be a very core part, that whole Human Plus program, or at least some sort of spiritual successor to it. Uh, so for that. And this is also, I'm going to switch this to 25 speed real quick because I want you to see something here. Okay, so we can see the weapons here. So on the right, this is a pod missile, you know, a missile pod. So we're going to be launching missiles from that. This thing on the left, when I first saw it, I thought maybe that could be some sort of radar array. It's not. We're going to find out what that is in a second. We're going to find out what that is a little bit later. And it's actually really interesting what that is on the left-hand side there. So I'm very excited to talk to you about that. All right, so we're going to go through here. This is also something that's very interesting. If you watch this part of the video, when I did the original reveal or, the reveal or whatever, I noticed that with the quad legs, you're able to float. And they were hovering at a set height and kind of floating around. So I was wondering then if that was a feature of quad legs or if that was something all the legs can do. And this part right here, it, this is a bipedal AC, but if you notice they're not falling, if you watch the video real closely, you'll see that actually they're not getting any lower. So it does look like they're hovering, so it looks like that hover functionality is something that all ACs can do, not only quad legs. So I'll back that up a real, just a tiny bit so you can see here. So you can kind of see, right, you're not losing any height there. So that's actually really interesting to know. And then the other thing I wanted to know was here. Uh, I was wondering on the right arm, is that a gun arm? But the more I look at it, I think that is actually just the same as the left hand side's arm. I think they're part of the same set for two reasons. One, because the more you kind of look at the shape, you do see they kind of resemble each other. So that would make sense it's an arm. You can also kind of see between the legs, there's an extension of a, of a barrel there. So that's one reason I think of it. I think it's just a regular arm. The other is because this is the exact same AC we've seen previously. Uh, the one that was taking off, you know, that's the missile pod right there on the right. That's that other thing on the left. So this is the same AC we've already seen, and we know that that AC was holding a weapon in its arm. So that is not a gun arm. That is just a regular arm holding some kind of rifle. So just needed to point that out right there. So what's also interesting here, right here, we can see, if you look over on the right-hand side here, we can see a dropship. And you can see there's an AC in it. So you can see the legs in there. You can also see there's a little AC in front of you. So you definitely have, or in front of you, it actually looks more like an MT. So that could be an MT on the right there. But in either case, it looks like these guys are on your side. So is this a multiplayer thing? I mean, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some sort of multiplayer in the game, obviously. But, you know, is this a co-op kind of situation? Or are these AI? I'm, I'm assuming these would be AI companions. I don't think your friends would crash and burn on entry, right? That doesn't make a lot of sense. But does this mean that we're going to have AI in the game, you know, AI companions in the game? And if we do, in what capacity? Because in some of the older games, they did have, and I don't think they had it in 5, but you did have the ability that when you started a mission, you could actually hire assistant mercenaries to join you. So you could actually hire uh, MTs, you could hire another AC, you, or you could hire air support. So you could say, okay, I want planes in the air to support me. And that would take a cut of the money you would get from that mission. So seeing these things coming in, I'm wondering, are they on your side? Because it does seem like they are, because it all seems like you're all going in the same direction. But if they are, does that mean that we can actually hire AI companions in the game like we could, say, I believe it was back in Armored Core uh, 2 or 3? You know, is that back? Or is this just pre-scripted where on this particular mission we're going to have AI companions? So that's something that I'm kind of really curious about and want to see. You know, here we have some basic fighting. This right here is really interesting to me. Uh, I can't get zoomed in on it real well. Here, let's slow it down so we can get it a little bit better. So this is going to show you some kind of environmental react, uh, you know, interaction here. And what's interesting is, is it launches you up. So if you watch something like, say, Neon Justice Evangelion, you know that when you get the, you know, the, uh, what, the Evas in, they have like a launch thing that launches them up to the surface. This looks very reminiscent of that. But what's interesting is, and, and why I think that this is interacting with the environment and not just an AC just jumping, 
is if we go really slow, if we go down to uh, 25.25, we can see, you see that? Real quickly, you can see he's boosting and then there's like a frame, there's like an animation jump. So it actually, it's not a smooth animation. There's kind of a little, uh, he just kind of jumps like that right, right there. And so what I think that is, is I think that's going from the regular boosting animation to going into this launching animation. And so because of that, I believe that this is actually an interaction with the environment. So I think that's really cool that we're going to have interactive environments like that. So that makes me really happy. All right, he launches up here, comes over. And so this right here, okay, I paused it perfectly. I'm so lucky. Look at, look at the AC. Okay, you see on the, on his shoulder right there, do you see the arm that's extending out? That's an energy shield. So that thing on the left that I said I originally thought was a radar array, it's not, it's a shield. And what he can do is you can actually, you know, open it in front of you. Let's slow it down so we can see, get a slightly better look at it. Okay, so we're gonna back this up just a tiny bit. Okay, and you can see there he's uh, opening it, but uh, let's go real slow here. Okay, so we can see he comes up, it comes over the shoulder, opens up and then causes some sort of shield so that and then goes back okay and closes up so that is an energy shield that's what that is so that's really interesting that we're actually going to have energy shields as a shoulder weapon or shoulder component so that's actually to me really interesting i don't remember them i know that they've had shielding in the past but i don't really recall if it's been quite that interactive so we'll, we'll see how it goes uh, with that so that's actually really exciting for me when I saw that because I didn't know what that was at first and then that scene is Really fast. So if you're not paying attention, you know, it's kind of hard to see what's going on there It just kind of looks like an explosion, right? So we'll kill this MT here All right here. We have our quad guy All right, and uh, this guy's got something really interesting that we're gonna see so first of all these missiles on the right those look like those vertical missiles uh, it looks like they're going to launch straight up, which is a callback to older weapons. Okay, and then here is that hovering thing. So you notice he's not losing height, he's just kind of hovering. And that, like I said earlier, when we looked at the bipedal one, seemed to be doing some the same thing. So I do think that hovering is a new ability, basically, that you know they're going to be able to doing. It wasn't in the older games. It might have been in 4, if I remember correctly. But uh, it hasn't been around for a while, so it wasn't in 5. So that's really interesting that we're going to have this ability just kind of hover and hold ourselves in the air like that. All right. And we got this firing here. And then this is another thing I was wrong. I said there were no chicken legs. This guy's got reverse joint. These are reverse joint legs right here. That's worth noting. Uh, if we slow it down real quick, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. But, you know, this guy fires. And you can see real pretty clearly there, these are reverse joint legs. So there are reverse joint legs in the trailer. I just didn't see them because they were so fast. And this weapon right here that he's using is actually really interesting. You see he fires it. It looks to be some kind of plasma weapon, but it also seems to be some kind of plasma shotgun. And actually the frame I caught it at is perfect because you can see the pellets basically spreading there and they're going to turn into these little laser beams a little bit longer. You can see there it kind of does that whole spread thing. So this seems to be some sort of short range kind of pulse weapon. So that's actually really interesting as well, that we got a different uh, look at a different kind of weapon here. All right. And I was wrong earlier. I said it was the quadruped. It's not. It's the tank legs that have the interesting thing that I want to show you. And that is right here. Okay, did you catch that? If you didn't, that's okay. We'll go back. We'll go look real close. So watch this. So if you look here, we're going to see he is a... He has equipped in his right arm, or sorry, left arm. Currently, it has a bazooka. Okay, so it's holding a bazooka in its left arm. And then what it's gonna do, is we're gonna see him go into the slide here. Okay. And then he switches, he switches the left hand weapon with the shoulder weapon. So it's not just a weapon. It looks like we can actually swap. So you can actually store a secondary weapon on your shoulder instead and then swap those out. Now, I don't really know what the benefit would that be as opposed to just saying having a weapon launching from the shoulder, you know, like, okay, I can hold a missile pod in my arm versus I can launch it from my shoulder. I don't know what the advantage of that is, but it is a function. So, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. 
And then also, uh, this is your classic multi-missile right here. So just right there, you can see he's gonna split right there, split, multi-missile. Okay, so this is your classic multi-missile. Why it's a hand weapon and not a shoulder weapon, I'm not sure, but that's what it is. Okay, and then we get our, we're gonna get our MT with the laser weapon here. Also worth noting, look at that. Uh, 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 uh. We can see this guy is gonna fire, look at this. Flamethrower, so flamethrower returns. If you have, if you're familiar with the older games, the flamethrower was a really great way to overheat your enemies. You know, they have a, a was it your, your coolant, your radiator, that's what it's called. Your radiator basically would cool your AC down. You know, the more you, the more actions you do, the more you heat up, your radiator can cool that down. But if you overheat an AC, it will take continuous damage until it's able to cool itself back down. The flamethrower was a devastating weapon up close because you could just overheat an enemy and they were just you know, losing hit points really quickly. Not so great for range, but the fact that we can see it right here is really interesting. So the flamethrower is making a comeback. That is exciting. Also, this thing over here, I do believe, is some kind of MT, so I don't think we're going to have access to this laser sword over here, unfortunately. Alright, so let's continue. Okay, another big enemy. Alright, and this, let's see if I can get a good frame on it. Okay, there we go. You can kind of see it. So you have the quad AC down, you have a bipedal AC in the air, and in the back, there is a third AC. You can't see him real well here. I'll slow it down. You can kind of see him in the background. But again, I was saying, I don't know if hover legs are returning, but that AC in the back looks like it has hover legs. So it looks like we are getting hover legs back. So it was a quick, you know, blink and you miss it moment right there. Okay, we boost in. You can see that AC fires. Okay, now we can see very distinctly all three. The bipedal one is in the air, and then we can see the quad on the ground, and we can see the hover one, you know, between the two. He's in the back, but we can see him back there too. And what's also interesting is we can kind of see this green energy emitting from our AC. I don't know if that's damage or if that is a shield again. I'm not quite sure, but it does look like hover legs are returning, so I did say I didn't see them, but they are right there. So we do see them, and there they are. All right, and then we're gonna move in, and we're gonna get a little bit of dialogue, okay? Uh, they talk about how you know you're one of Walter's hounds. Remember, if you from the beginning, it said that Walter was our handler, so that's interesting. Uh, they're also gonna mention that our call sign is Raven, which was something that I said. Oh, there's no mention of Raven in the trailer. There is. There's actually two mentions of Raven in the trailer. Um, so the first one is saying that it's our call sign, so that's what we are. If you played the original games, all AC pilots that were part of your network were called Ravens. You were all Ravens. This one, it just looks like there's one Raven. That's you. What's also worth noting is that really skinny AC. I was wondering if it was... It took, when I saw it, I was originally thinking it's an enemy, but when I'm looking here, we're actually facing the same direction against this giant tank thing. So it looks like that's going to be an ally. You know, whether he'll betray you and stay as an ally for a long time is hard to be said. But what's also worth noting is looking at his weapons here. So if we look at his shoulder, it looks like he's got a chain gun on the shoulder, which was in the older games, a basically a machine gun that you had on your shoulder. And that was one of the things that you actually had to crouch down for. And also his sword is really interesting. Now, we're going to get into the sword in a bit. This is actually a new weapon that I'm unfamiliar with, so I'm really excited about this one. So he's going to jump in. Okay, that's us. But here, we have that same sword, it looks like. And check this out. You can't see this. If it's, it's really fast. It's really hard to see this, but look at this. He zooms in. Look at that. It unfolds and spins. Okay, so we got an unfolding and spinning weapon here. All right, so let's do that again. Unfold, spin, and then he jumps in, and then he does this kind of like buzzsaw attack with it. Okay, that was a really fast, you know, blink and you miss it kind of thing going in there. So that is really interesting to me. All right, and then here is where they mentioned the second time, call sign Raven, and basically priority subject. 
for termination. So, um, you know, clearly they don't like us. And this thing here, what I said when I saw the original one, I did notice this, and I do think I got it right. This looks to be some sort of lance or possibly a parry blade. In the older games, you had a parry blade. Basically, it was a weapon that was on your right arm, not your left. And it wasn't a slash, it was a stab. So you would go, you know, kind of do a charge forward with it did a lot of damage. This one seems to be some sort of energy-based parry blade because if we look real closely, what we can see here is he's gonna come in, he pulls it out, does this kind of, uh, he doesn't swing it, he just does a lunge straight in. He's got chicken legs too, worth noting. And then right there, just charge in, okay? So it looks like that's some sort of lunge going in. So that's interesting, okay? This is just another enemy, all right. Uh, we get another AI talking here about a generator. Okay, that might be your AC's AI. Uh, if you remember from the older games, you know, there was always an AI that came in and would tell you, you know, like, mission begin or whatever. So that's probably your AC's AI would be my guess. This is another enemy. Looks to be an AC inside some sort of rig. So that's kind of interesting. And he mentions... Uh, you know, why are you hiding behind another's call sign? So we might not be the original Raven. There might have been somebody else who's Raven and we've taken up that mantle. So that's interesting. So yeah, that's probably going to be a story relevant. All right, just some more enemies, basically. All right, we launch a missile from there. And yeah, that takes us basically through the end of the video. All right. And here we get a beautiful view of all the skies of Rubicon all messed up. Okay. So that's the video. That is everything that we've gone through. They've also have, you know, the purchasing stuff there, but that doesn't tell us much about the game. That's just what you can buy. So hopefully that this anal or hopefully this analysis was very useful for you. I hope you found it really interesting and I hope you're as excited as I am because I am super pumped uh, for come for what this August 25th when it comes out. So I'm super excited. So yeah. Thanks for coming and I hope, you know, leave us a comments if you saw something that I didn't or if you're just as interested, you know. So, see you guys soon. Bye-bye.